Hello guys, welcome back to Maison African Motives. Uh, still working on electro technology N3, that is uh, working on the AC theory. Uh, from the question paper of November 2022, we've got uh, question number six, where we are given in this case from the information, a parallel circuit consists of three branches with the following components. So take note, this is a parallel circuit. It's, it has got the first branch, a resistor of 50 ohms, the second branch, an inductor of 40 millihenries and negligible resistance, meaning to say we are not considering the resistance. And the branch three, that is a capacitor of uh, 140 uh, microfarad in this case. And these three, they are in parallel to a voltage source of uh, 200 volts, 60 hertz supply. All right, so we have got uh, something of this nature here. We have got uh, uh, a resistor, the first branch, it's a resistor. Uh, that is our first branch. It consists of a resistor. Then if we move on to the second branch, it is an inductor. So we are going to connect an inductor in this case. So we have got our inductor. And the third branch with a capacitor. So this is uh, what we have in parallel. Take note, this connection is said to be in a parallel combination. So we are going to have this up to this part where we're going to have our voltage uh, in this case. All right, so let me just have it this way. All right, so this is connected to a voltage source of uh, 200, 200 volt 60, 60 S supply. So this is our AC uh, that we are given. So in this case, we've got a voltage of 200, uh, 200 uh, volts. Uh, the frequency is at uh, 50 hertz in this case. So the first part or the first branch, you remember, it's a resistor, 50 ohms, an inductor, 40, and a capacitor of 140 microfarad. So we're going to uh, just have this on our diagram, a resistor in this case of uh, 50 ohms, and inductance in this case of uh, 40 millihenries, and a capacitor of uh, 140 microfarad in this case. So this is the information that you're given. And uh, just to note on your diagram, the flow of current from this branch is going to enter uh, the capacitor. It enters this branch to the inductor. It enters the branch of uh, the resistor. But what is important is that in a parallel circuit, the voltage across is the same. So meaning to say, Across the capacitor, we have got a voltage of 200. Across the inductor, a voltage of 200. Across the resistor, a voltage of 200. The voltage is the one that is the same. So that is, this information is very, very important in answering these typical questions. Like the first part, we are given from this circuit to determine the following 6.1, that is uh, the current through the resistor. So you need the current that is across the resistor. So with this knowledge that the voltage is the same in a parallel circuit, if we are given, uh, in this case, we have got a voltage and a resistance. So meaning to say we can calculate our current direct because we know that current is equal to voltage over the resistance. So we are just going to take the resistor as it is, which is the supply voltage which is our VT in this case. And the voltage of 200 volts to the resistance in this case of uh, 50. So we are going to obtain, uh, in this case, this is going to give us uh, four amps. So this is our current measured in amps. All right, so that is the first part of our question, which was to calculate the current across the resistor. Then the second part is the current across the inductor. So if we check here, it's uh, a purely inductive circuit that we are given uh, from this branch, the branch two, it's a, the, we do not have any other component, it's just an inductor. So meaning to say our current is supposed to be taken from the same formula that we say that current is simply the voltage over the resistance. But this time we are referring to the current across the inductor. So the voltage is the still the supply voltage that we are given, but the resistance now we are talking about XL, which is uh, the inductive reactance, not the resistance, but the inductive reactance in this case, where the inductive reactance can be calculated from uh, the frequency and the inductor that you are given. Remember that XL from your formula is given as a uh, two pi FL which means we are going to substitute two pi times the frequency 
our frequency is a 50 hertz in this case times the inductance our inductance is given as 40 milli henrys so this is 40 times 10 to the exponent of negative 3 so if we simplify this part we are going to obtain our xl which is going to be 15,07 uh that's something like 07964 so if you round off to three decimal places as you can see this is going to change into a 10 and it gives on this 8 so it's going to be 15,08 uh ohms in this case all right so with our inductive reactants we can calculate the current across the inductor that is the voltage supply which is the same throughout since it's a parallel circuit of 200 divided to our inductive reactants of uh, 15,08. So that is going to give us uh, the current across the inductor, uh, which in this case, we are going to obtain something like 13,263. That is to three decimal places. So we have the current across the inductor. All right, so that is how we can attempt these typical questions. Uh, same question with on 6.3, the current across or the current through the capacitor in this case. So we are going to apply the same concept across the capacitor. We only have a capacitor in this case. So what you're going to do is to use uh, the same formula, but this time we are referring to a capacitor. So the current across the capacitor is voltage over the capacitive reactants, which is referred to as XC in this case. So from our information or from this, we can calculate XC from your formula sheet. Your XC is given as one over two pi FC. So that means we are going to substitute whatever that we are given on our formula. That's one times one over two pi times the frequency of uh, 50 hertz in this case times our capacitance which is 140 micro farad so micro that's times 10 to the exponent of negative 6 so we're going to have 140 times 10 to the exponent of uh, negative 6 so that is our capacitive uh, reactance in this case which is going to give us uh, something like uh, 18,947 uh, 017, which is uh, 7 like this in ohms. So this is our reactance, which is our capacitive reactance, the one that is going to help us to find now the current across the capacitor because we are saying the voltage is still at 200 volts. So we are going to have our voltage 200 divided to the capacitive reactance, which we got of uh, 18, uh, 947. All right. So this is going to give us uh, the current across the capacitor in this case, which in uh, in this case, we are going to obtain uh, something like uh, 10. So this is going to be 10,55576, which is going to be 10,556 amps. All right, so this is how we can now uh, calculate the current across the capacitor. Then uh, the other part of our question, okay, let's check the other part of our question. What are we given in this case? All right, so the other part of the question that we are given, which is on 6.4, was to calculate in this case, uh, that is the total current flow. So if we are to check in this case for the total current flow, what we need is, uh, remember, it's a, it's a parallel circuit. So our total current flow in this case is referred to as the phasor sum. So this is the phasor sum of the given currents. So what we need is to compare between the two currents which is uh, the current across the inductor and the current across the capacitor. All right, so if we check here, we calculated the current across the inductor, we got something like uh, 13,263 amps. We calculated the current across the capacitor, that was uh, 10,556 amps. And also the current across the resistor, we calculated this, this was uh, 4 amps. So what I'm saying is that, you need to compare first between these two values. Are we having, uh, which condition are we having? Is it that the uh, the current across the capacitor is bigger than the current across the inductor or, or so on? So if we check the current across the inductor in this case is 13 comma, which is bigger than this one across the capacitor because the current across the capacitor is 10 comma. So we can see, or we can compare to say the current across the inductor is greater than the current across the capacitor. So on a condition like this, if the current across 
the inductor is greater than the one for the capacitor. Like I said, it's a phasor sum. So you're going to have our total current, which is equal to the square root of, you're also given this formula, uh, which is IR squared plus IL minus IC. The one that is bigger is the one that subtracts the smaller one. So that will be IC squared. If it was a condition that IC is greater than IL, you're going to use IC minus IL. So this is how you can note your formula. So this gives us the total current, which is the square root of IR, which is our current across the resistor. That is four squared plus IL minus IC. So IL in this case, that is 13, 263 minus IC, which is uh, 10, 556. All right, so this whole part is being squared under the, the square root. So we are going to obtain the total current in this case. So what will be our total current uh, from our calculator? We are going to obtain something like 4,8289 uh, and so on. So if we round off to three decimal places, this eight is going to change a nine into a 10. It gives this value a three. So that will be 4,830, which is 4,83 amps. All right, so this will be our total current in this case. As we can see, uh, we are going to obtain uh, 4.83. Then the other part of the question, uh, that is on 6.5, was calculate the impedance of the circuit. So once you have the total current, we can calculate our impedance. Remember, impedance just like resistance, which is voltage over total current. But in this case, we are referring to the impedance Z, which is the total voltage over the total current in this case. So our impedance, remember our voltage was given as 200 volts from our supply over the total current, uh, total voltage here, 200 volts. Uh, if we check here from our information, voltage 200, and we calculated the, uh, the total current uh, here. So we are going to divide by our total current uh, which is 4,83. So we're going to have 4,83. So that's our impedance in this case. So we are going to obtain 41.407867 uh, and so on, which is going to be 408 uh, to three decimal places. Impedance, just like just like resistance, it's measured in uh, in ohms. So this is how we can calculate our values. So all you need, guys, is to work on your formulas. Work with your formula sheet understand each and every formula, what you're given on the formula sheet, and what does it mean if you are given the values, and also the unit of measurement, which is very, very important in our syllabus. Okay, guys, that's it uh, from Maison African Motives. Till we meet again.